Well, before we start, I just want to let you know that this is going to be a little bit shorter than normal. Now keep it down. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much you beg, I can't make it any longer. <laughs> Some of you know this story already, but back in February, I went to Georgia and Florida to visit Jared and Justin. And I was coming home, and it was during that time when we had the major snowfall. Well, as I'm coming through Nashville, a guy in the right in the lane to my right was going about two mile an hour, and at the last second decided he was coming into my lane. Well, I missed him, but in the process, I went into some major spinning. Now, while that's fun in a carnival, it is not fun in the middle of the highway. Needless to say, I was praying very earnestly about that time. And I spun around a few times and finally bounced off the median, the stone median, which kept me from going over into oncoming traffic. And after a couple more spins, I finally stopped. And I was able to uh, make it the rest of the way home, which was another six hours. Um, I thought I just had a little bit of an alignment problem after hitting the wall. Well, there were two things that kept that situation from being a lot worse. The first is the very earnest prayers I was given at that time. It kept me from a severe crash, and it also got me home. See, I found out later, and those of you that have seen the new car know why, um, I found out later my entire undercarriage was completely messed up and the van was totaled. But somehow or other, and we all know how, I got home driving on it, and we know that was God. Second, the median did its job and kept me from total disaster. Now, like that median, God's commands keep us safe and secure. And we're talking today about the Ten Commandments, which wasn't originally what I planned to do. It started out being about prayer, went into treating God number one, and kind of made a left turn into the commandments. So, <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. One pastor put it like this, we're not saved by keeping the Ten Commandments. However, we are kept safe by them. The law reveals the righteousness of God, but it can't produce righteousness in us. That, they can give us, it doesn't give us life, but it can guide our life and help us down the road. And that's important, because a study by George Barna says 94% of Americans do not hold a biblical worldview. 94%. 88% of Americans subscribe to a form of syncretism, which, and I had to look it up, according to Barna, is a disparate, irreconcilable collection of beliefs and behaviors that define people's lives. Basically, what syncretism is, is a cut and paste approach to life. We embrace the points of view or actions that feel comfortable or the most convenient to us. We don't want to do anything that involves a lot of effort and a word we're going to look at a little more closely, commitment. You all know the commandments, but here's a brief recap. And I came really close to using the hillbilly version, but I resisted. <laughs> but these are pretty good. This is a good way to remember this. The Ten Commandments are one God. No idols. Revere his name. Remember to rest. Honor parents. No murder. No adultery. No stealing. No lying. And no coveting. Now I'm not going to get into all the commandments today. That'd be a whole other sermon or a series of sermons. But we're going to take a look at that first one because this is the biggie. Exodus 20, 1-3 says this. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Or as Jesus says in Matthew 22, 37 and 38, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. We could say it like this. If God is not Lord of all, He's not your Lord at all. God has to be first. He has to be number one. He won't play second fiddle. 
get a video.